Hey, it's Steve. Let's talk about courage. I think one common misconception about courage is that we always have to center it in a sense of bravery or valor or pushing through resistance or overcoming fear, conquering fear. It's a path of dominance and control over ourselves, over a situation. But there's a different way of thinking about building courage, which is that what you're really trying to do is build trust in a situation, in life, to harmonize instead of to dominate. One example would be building trust with being in front of an audience, like on any kind of stage. If you get to the point where you build trust through experience, where the stage becomes familiar, it feels comfortable, you feel centered there, you feel right at home, now you have a courageous relationship with the stage, meaning that you can express yourself, you can stretch yourself in that environment because you feel right at home there, you feel centered there. It doesn't require every time pushing through resistance and pushing through fear because you've created a relationship with the stage. Now you've lost your fear essentially. Now you've let go of the fear. You've created a different kind of relationship that doesn't give rise to fear. When you create a relationship that gives rise to fear, you may tend to lean on thinking of courage as having to push through and conquer and control that fear. But when you create a relationship based on trust, then you get a different form of courage, which is one based on harmony. Another way you can build courage is through trusting in the natural growth process. You make mistakes, you learn, you adapt, you try again. Uh, for instance, in doing creative work, this is a process of getting into it and growing through the experience. Instead of focusing on success in your creative work, you might think instead about creating a trust-based relationship with it. Uh, when I started blogging back in 2004 about self-development, one of my goals was to build a trusting relationship with the platform, with the experience, with the audience. It's the same thing with making a video. Uh, instead of trying to push through fears and dominate and conquer the inner self, you can think instead with harmonizing with the process. Where do I feel resistance in this? How can I change that, replace that with something else that feels more harmonious to me? There have been many times in my life, especially uh, on an entrepreneurial path where I had a choice to make about trying to push through resistance or trying to dissolve resistance or, and harmonize with life, with circumstances in a different way. And I've found time and time again that the harmonious path works so much better. Then I don't have to keep pushing with this sense of bravery and valor and trying to build up my confidence. I simply create situations where I induce a sense of harmony and flow and being able to feel right at home there, feeling centered. So I think what, where we're really trying to get here is this feeling of centeredness in life, this feeling of comfort, this feeling of familiarity, the feeling of mutual support, like we are supporting other people, they are supporting us, we're in harmony with the flow of life. And if you focus on building trust rather than trying to push and control, I think you'll find that's an easier pathway to get there over time. Another aspect of life you can trust in is trusting in the recovery process. We often have setbacks. You know, we have to sometimes fall back, uh, forgive, heal, let go, bounce back, surrender. If you're still breathing, you're still in the game. So it's not over yet if you're still breathing. You still have a chance to recover in some way. Now, sometimes there are easier pathways to recover and sometimes you know, the, the, the path to recover can be very difficult or tricky, but you still have that option to trust, to trust in what life is giving you, to trust in the challenge, to trust in the lessons. Another thing you can trust in is the possibility, the vastness of possibility space. The idea here is that you always have options for expressing yourself, for sharing, for making invitations, for filtering through the options and the invitations that you receive. This is especially important when socializing with people. There's so much human variety out there that you can simply trust in the vastness of the possibility space, the, the many, many options you have to find compatible matches and not get so stuck with tunnel vision thinking that they have to come from a certain direction. When you open your mind and you start thinking, wow, there really are a lot of possibilities out there for compatible matches. Surely there are interesting people that I could have as friends or, or lovers or business partners. And yeah, that's all true, as long as you stay open to it. 
And that is one thing you can keep leaning into trust with, is trusting the vastness of the possibility space. That also leads to building trust in life itself, trusting the flow of life. You can see life as a spiritual training ground of sorts. You have the option to rail against the world, to rail against what life brings you, to resist circumstances, to resist whatever arises in your life. But another option is to think, you know, that's not going to build trust with life if I think that way. What if, I inst what if instead I think, maybe life is trying to teach me something. Maybe there's a reason I'm here. Maybe life is purposeful. Maybe life is an incredible golden teacher. So if that is your philosophy of life, if that is where you're taking your harmonizing, your trust in life, you may find that life opens up and brings a newfound flow of abundance. When I was younger, I used to struggle with this um, railing against life, you know, thinking it was me against the world, feeling alone a lot, spending a lot of time by myself. And it really just led to a dead end. <laughs> it led to a dead end of always pushing against what life was bringing me, feeling a lot of resistance, feeling that I wasn't getting anywhere. And when instead I started trying to harmonize with life more, uh, that worked so much better, creating cooperation instead of competition. And lastly, one other thing we can learn to build trust in is death itself. What is death? It's a chance to integrate, to review, to reflect. It's a transition back to non-physical existence. We can frame death in such a way where it creates a trust barrier with life or it creates trust wounds where we don't trust death. We see it as the end of everything. It, it has no meaning. It has no purpose. It's a descent into oblivion. We can see death like that. We can see it as a threat or we can see it as something beautiful, something remarkable, something wondrous, some, something perhaps mysterious. And we can totally uh, change and transform our relationship with life by changing our relationship with the end of life. With more trust, we can take more action. We can experience more. When you feel centered in some aspect of life, in some situation, you feel more open. You feel more free to be yourself, to express yourself as you are. You don't have to hold back. You don't have to wear your mask all the time. And so through more trust, you get to experience a richer life that's more fully you, where you get to be more fully expressive of your true inner spirit, bring more of that out into the world. That comes through trust. That doesn't come through always pushing through resistance. Trust alleviates fear with harmony and cooperation, not with force or control. So instead of thinking about courage as pushing against resistance, imagine courage as letting go of resistance, releasing resistance, dissolving resistance, thinking about how you can better harmonize with life.